Hi there folks, welcome back to Rich Review. So my latest documentary on this channel, and it's been a while since I have done a documentary on this channel, and this is called Close for Storm. This is written and directed by Jake Williams. This had its premiere at the New Orleans Film Festival last year, and this tells the story about the rise and fall of Six Flags New Orleans, otherwise known as Jazzland, and Jake Williams has a channel called Bright Sun Films, and his channel is devoted to, you know, abandoned hotels and theme parks. Apologies to Jake Williams and his channel. I happen to like Kevin Perger's Defunct Land a whole lot more, even though at the same time that delves a lot into Disney parks and also occasional TV shows as well. Trust me, there's a whole cottage industry on YouTube dedicated to abandoned malls, theme parks, hotels, and you can't believe the history behind everything that you've seen. Six Flags New Orleans, or called Jazzland, as you prefer to call it, is a theme park that existed for several years. Now, one of the things that they go into, and this documentary is only an hour and 15 minutes documentary. Now, last year I reviewed a documentary called Class Action Park about the most infamous New Jersey water park. Now, let me confess that this film is not in that same league as Class Action Park, because Class Action Park, you just sat there, gosmacked at everything that was happening at this park. This film is no less interesting, because it delves into some tricky stuff here, involving land rights and, you know, how much you want to pay up and an eyesore for a community. And this park had its roots in development in the early 90s. Now, previously, beforehand, there was only one other theme park in New Orleans at the time. And we get to have this three of talking heads, five people who remember this park. And at least at one point there was a person saying, oh yeah, you have to go here to Biloxi or Houston. And well, you know, it took them a long time to come up with this theme park and how much it would cost. And what do you know, eventually they were able to get something off the ground and it was called Jazzland. And basically considering, you know, New Orleans is right next door in the French Quarter and whatnot. It was, hey look, it's a day for the whole family and the whole kids. More interesting aspects is that, yes, that first year the park operated, it was getting nearly a million visitors. And that, quite frankly, was a good year. Unfortunately, that number dropped the subsequent year. Now, apparently, the owner of this theme park was a Greek shipping magnate. And I guess the original company I wanted to do operations for it dropped out early on, and that was this. Now the Greek shipping company was going to unload this particular park, and so therefore after a couple of years, Six Flags took ownership of it. People were excited, oh yeah, Six Flags is coming to a park near you. Now let me confess, in Virginia we don't have Six Flags, we obviously have Paramount Kings Dominion, we have Bush Gardens, which I didn't realize till very late in life that I was actually named off a of beer. Obviously, what went wrong with Six Flag New Orleans? Hurricane Katrina happened, and lo and behold, they had their own water system, and that broke. And clearly, this also ties into the local economy of New Orleans because, hey, look, New Orleans was obviously devastated. One of the things I come to learn is that this park was you know, in East New Orleans. And East New Orleans has never quite fully recovered compared to the rest of New Orleans. Well, it's obviously left of Six Flags New Orleans or Jazzland, whatever you want to call it. It's an eyesore to the local residents. And they obviously were being told that, oh yeah, this is going to be like Disneyland. Well, obviously that didn't happen. And another reason why this park never reopened was that Six Flags was $400 million in debt. Now, one of the nice things that Six Flags did was pay the staff from basically August of that year to about, you know, midway through 2006 the next year. Sadly, of course, a hostile takeover did take place, and management was just sort of like, we don't really have anything for you. But obviously, at the same time, one Six Flags in Texas was being shut down, another in Kentucky, so basically... People here are like, well, you know, hey, look, it was a bad time for Six Flags all around. So the New Orleans property was just 
they're starting up bad luck. One of the things this documentary is telling you later on is that there are multiple people trying to bid for this property, trying to reclaim its former glory, and obviously, as we see, some people are like, yeah, this is not going to happen. Multiple administrations of New Orleans have come in and gone out and saying, oh yeah, we are going to help restore this park, and nothing ever happens. Even though they have business plans, and we also come to realize that probably never take place, come to learn that, oh yeah, in order to tear down this park, it would cost an additional $20 million. Now, one of the things that obviously Tix Life did was take away the roller coaster stuff. One of the more interesting aspects is that, oh yeah, now the Six Flags is just basically a tourism area for, you know, homeless people, you know, trespassers, and outdoor explorers. And we, caught, and we talked to some of these outdoor explorers and how they're like, yeah, isn't this a wonderful, what used to be area? At least one employee during the nighttime shows the indoor areas obviously left water damage and we see all these computers from 2005 and it's like a world that's been left behind now obviously new orleans has been built back to a certain degree although it's never going to be restored to its former glory so in the end folks what i'm going to say about clothes for storm amazingly enough i'm going to give this a matinee ring because i think it's good it's not quite up to snuff with class action park nothing ever will be so folks close for storm have you seen this what you think please put everything in the comment box below here folks as always folks like comment subscribe and reach yourself with knowledge i'm at michael richard richard 2 on twitter i'll see you next time folks yes hooray